What's going on, guys? Welcome back to WWE Network and show where I, Graham Jesus and Matthews, break down all the original content I watch on the WWE Network. Today, we're talking the latest installment in the WWE Chronicle series, focusing on Rey Mysterio. I'm ahead of TLC tonight on the WWE Network, which as of right now, he will not be a part of, but I would not be surprised um, to see him have an impromptu title match against uh, Humberto Carrillo or Ricochet. AJ Styles, again, even though they just did it on Raw, maybe a multi-man match, who knows. Um, but anyway, so this episode of Chronicle takes place from November 18th, the go-home show before Survivor Series, through December 9th, which would have been this past week on Raw, this past Monday. Um, not your typical Chronicle. Usually, I mean, at least the first few episodes of Chronicle, um, maybe not all of them, but some of them would take place from one pay-per-view to the next. Um, this one starts right before Survivor Series and goes right through TLC, except not happening, not, not including the pay-per-view, of course, because that's tonight. Um, but I thought this was really well done, about 45 minutes in length. Um, a little bit longer than the usual, than the usual Chronicles. I think the recent ones have been a half an hour, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but this, this was well worth the time. This was a lot of fun. This was very enjoyable. And always great to see Rey Mysterio in this type of a setting. Uh, so before we go all the way back to November 18th, the special starts off on December 4th with Rey Mysterio showing off his various masks from throughout his entire illustrious career. He talks about the importance of the masks in Lucha Libre and that culture. Um, talks about how the masks represent who he is in the ring and his culture. Um, talks about his uncle, who he adopted the Rey Mysterio ring name from, because uh, Rey Mysterio Sr. is not his dad. It's his uncle. That's actually where he got the name, so... Uh, I'm not sure if many people knew that. I'm, I'm sure that was a pretty common thing. But yeah, his uncle was Rey Mysterio Sr., who bestowed the name upon him uh, upon one of Rey Mysterio's first matches back in 1991. Uh, we also see a shot of Rey putting the mask, one of his masks, on his dog, which was kind of funny. So uh, yeah, like I said, this takes place from November 18th through December 9th, going all the way back um, to November 18th. We see Rey Mysterio talking about how he thought this would be easy. He thought being Rey Mysterio would be easy. But he found out very quickly that it wasn't, that it that was not going to be easy to be this prodigy, you know, the nephew of one of the great Mexican Lucha Libre competitors, that being Rey Mysterio Sr. He found out very, very quickly, and he was in for a shock when he started wrestling, that he wasn't ready. He was not ready to be Rey Mysterio. Uh, we also see him talking about his uh, custom-made boots and how the company that used to make his wrestling boots years ago closed down. So Natalia bought him uh, an awesome pair um, that I guess he probably still uses to this day, a pink and, uh, and black pair um, that, um, that she bought, I guess, right before they went out of business or right after they went out of business. So to kind of pay her back for it, he had a custom pair of those same type of boots made with the Hart design on them, the Bret Hart design and the, you know, her, for her father and the whole Hart Dynasty thing, which was really cool. So he actually gives her the boots right then and there in the hallway at Raw, which I thought was awesome. And during all of this, Rey Mysterio is wearing a Louis Vuitton mask, which um, Natalia picks up on, and so does Kevin Owens, and they get a major kick out of the fact that he's wearing a Louis Vuitton mask. And Kevin Owens even goes so far as to say, hey, don't show my wife, which I thought was funny. Um, but anyway, so Rey Mysterio shows off his first ever action figure that he ever had. Not, you know, just an action figure, but his first ever action figure of himself. And talks about how seeing that really represents the hard work of him getting to that point. Um, he also shows off the trophies that he got from his sons, calling him like the best dad, stuff like that, which is which really, moreover than anything else, he's most proud of that stuff. He says that family means everything to him, and that uh, Dominic, his son, actually learned the 619 on his own. People probably think, oh, Rey Mysterio taught it to him, blah, blah, blah. No, it was his son um, that just went off and did it on his own at Lance's school, Lance Storm School, before it closed down a couple months ago. Um, he talks about how the costume designers, the people who design his attire and masks and stuff like that, are like a second family. And he uh, never imagined a match of this magnitude with Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series with his son involved would ever happen. Uh, I don't know if he's talking about the match with Brock itself, but probably more so the story of having a son involved and having a son get physical in the match. He never thought anything like that would ever be possible, but now it's happening at Survivor Series. Um, he said, with this match, he also wants to prove to fans that he could still put on a damn good show, even at the age of 45. And of course, Rey Mysterio isn't the same competitor he, the same competitor he was 10, 15 years ago, but the guy can still go out there and have a damn good match. Um, so we talked about how he never really pushed his son into wrestling, 
and how, you know, he kind of wanted him to make that decision on his own. He said that Dominic was very passionate about football, so he graduated high school, where I guess he played football. And I believe he did baseball, too, because when I met Rey Mysterio about four years ago at a Northeast Wrestling show, I didn't ask him how his son was doing, but someone else did next to me that was right behind me in line. And Ray said, oh, yeah, he's doing great. He just tried out for the baseball team, blah, blah, blah. So I think he's 22 now, so he would have been 18 at that point, so probably a senior in high school. Uh, Ray said that he graduated high school and that he went to community college, not saying what he wanted to pursue, um, but he went to community college, and he was there for no more than six months before he had to sit down with his dad, Ray, and told his dad, listen, I want to go into the family business. I want to wrestle. And Ray was like, you know, taken aback by this in a positive way. Like, holy shit, like, I didn't know we really wanted to break into the business, but here we are, and he's going to follow in my footsteps, which is awesome. Like, I'll help train you. This is cool. So we see them at the Survivor Series show the morning of. We see them practicing the double 619, which was really fucking cool. Um, Ray says that Dominic watched a lot of footage of Eddie Guerrero that same day doing the frog splash so we can kind of imitate doing the move on Brock later on in the night. So we see Ray preparing for the match. Uh, the match, he loses, but it was a very, I had thought it was a great match. I thought it was exactly what it needed to be. A six-minute spectacle with Ray Mysterio putting in a hell of a fight. His son getting involved, Dominic getting in there, hitting the 619 with his dad, the frog splash. It was a fucking awesome moment. I thought it was really, really cool. But he loses. And Ray Mysterio says afterward that you can't get distracted by not becoming champion. So he calls his wife afterward, tells her to thank God, light a candle to thank God tonight, uh, light a candle to thank God tonight for, uh, you know, being there with me in that moment and uh, helping me get through it, whatever. Uh, We hear from Dominic, who says it was a surreal moment to be out there with his dad, hitting Brock with the frog splash. How cool was that? Uh, Ray reflects on the night and how awesome it was. And also thanks Eddie Guerrero for helping him him get there. I mean, I mean, obviously Rey Mysterio was going to wrestle no matter what, but more so for his son. Because remember, Dominic wasn't brought into the wrestling business technically. He wasn't really brought into the fold until that story came about about 15 years ago with Rey Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero. And he was like they were fighting for the custody of Dominic and all that other stuff. And had it not been for that story, who knows if Dominic would be wrestling today? Maybe not. He probably kind of got the love for it, got the taste for wrestling when that story happened 15 years ago. So he thanks Eddie for that. Um, So we hear from Ray a few hours before Raw the next night in Chicago. And he tells the producer, like, listen, there's nothing really, as as of I know right now, there's nothing special scheduled for me on this show. And of course, things can change on a whim. And maybe he was lying and he already knew what was about to come and he didn't want to spoil it. But he sounded genuine when he said, like, I don't know what's going to happen on Raw tonight. And as far as I know, it's not going to be anything major. And sure enough, he went out there. But he said he always he was always ready to step up regardless. Regardless of what was going to be on tap for him on Raw that night, he was going to be ready to step it up. So sure enough, he goes out there, becomes not only the number one contender to the United States Championship, but also the United States Champion by beating AJ that very same night. Uh, Ray says that it was really cool for him to see his son taking off just as he starts to ride off into the sunset. He's well aware that he may not be retiring soon, but he's well past the halfway mark point of his career. Um, So to see his son starting to take off and be there in that moment for him becoming United States champion really really means a lot for him, and he hopes that he can create his own legacy in in the years to come. Um, so he arrives in Mexico. I think they did a a brief tour of Mexico in late November. I want to say early December. I think it was late November because I know Cain Velasquez was on the tour here too. Uh, we actually see him here on this special. We don't hear from Cain at all, but we see him with Ray when they're exploring the pyramids of Mexico. But, uh, Ray Mysterio says that Mexico gave him a chance to become a star early on in his career and he never forgot his roots. He remembers his uncle giving him the Rey Mysterio name during his match, actually. Not during the match, but right before a match that he had in August of 1991. He was out there, and he already had his name picked out and everything, but his uncle came out, cut a promo, saying that his son was worthy of the name Rey Mysterio Jr., so now call him that from, uh, you know, call him that from now on, which Rey was, like, blown away by in the moment, and he still obviously went by that name for all these years that have uh, since passed. Uh, which is pretty freaking cool. But um, he says that the person who designs his masks has been doing it pretty much since Ray started wrestling. He, uh, the guy's been designing masks, I guess, since he was eight years old. That's what Ray says, which is unbelievable. The guy's 61 now. 
And Ray says, or the guy admits, because he's right there when Ray's talking about him, that Ray was the first person that he ever designed a mask for professionally, which Ray, I guess, didn't know until he told him in that moment, which is pretty cool. Um, he says that he's worn thousands of different designs over the course of his career, a lot of which are inspired by Gucci and Louis Vuitton, which is kind of funny, and how they kind of put together designs. And uh, he kind of uses that as inspiration for his uh, mask designs and attire designs and stuff like that. Um, he remembers calling his wife, who was at that point his girlfriend, many, many years ago when he first started out wrestling in Mexico. He was in Mexico away from his fram, uh, I almost said family, uh, friends and family, and he didn't really have anything in Mexico aside from his, you know, uh, burgeoning wrestling career. He was just starting at wrestling, and he missed his wife. He was kind of not depressed out there, but he really wanted to go home. So we had a very candid conversation with his wife about, should I stay? Should I go? Should I pursue this? I really want to go home. I miss you, blah, blah, blah. And his wife actually convinced him who would later on to become his wife, who would go on to become his wa uh, wife later on in life, obviously. Um, she was the one he credits that convinced him to stay wrestling and is very thankful for her that she did that because without that phone call, without that conversation, he probably would have quit and we wouldn't have the Rey Mysterio that we do today. Um, so anyway, Rey Mysterio is in Mexico. He checks out all the other Rey Mysterio masks being sold on the street, which is kind of funny. And he takes a picture with the girl that's selling the masks, uh, that are like 300 pesos, I guess, which is unbelievable. I think, I, I'm assuming it's pesos. I wouldn't imagine she would say, oh, $300. Uh, it's probably 300 pesos, but still, that's a lot. Um, so he goes to the pyramids and uh, checks that out, and he remembers being there when he was a kid and uh, kind of reflects on his journey and this 30-year journey that he's had from where he started to where he is today. And he looks ahead to the show that he's going to be having in Mexico that very same night against... He said the Universal Champion, so I guess he must have wrestled uh, Bray for the Universal Championship in Mexico, despite already being the United States Champion. So he looks ahead to that main event match, and he said that uh, early on in his career, because he gets asked by the producer, was there ever a point, or really rather he asks, what has kept you grounded this entire time? Because Rey Mysterio is well known for being one of the more modest guys in all of wrestling. And he says there was a point early on in his career that he felt he was getting a big head, or he didn't really know that until people around him, and specifically his loved ones, brought it to his attention that he was getting a big head. So after being told by people around him, people that really meant a lot to him, that he was getting a big head, he changed his ways, and he has not been that way since then, and he's been grounded ever since. Um, so we arrive at the show, we see footage of the show that he ends up main eventing that night as the United States Champion for the Universal Championship, we hear from all these fans who say they're there to see Rey Mysterio, which is cool. He says that these are my people. These are all identities that I live off of and represent proudly. Talking about being being Mexican, being a Lucha Libre, being you know uh, a WWE superstar, all this other stuff that he does not take lightly and tries to represent proudly, at, you know, as proudly as he possibly can, which is really cool. Um, he says that he constantly looks back at everything he's done alongside his wife and everything they've accomplished together. And uh, again, he does not take that stuff lightly. And he says that he was very close because the producer asks Ray, how close were you to retirement? And this is where I feel like, I mean, maybe it's a shoe, I don't know, but this is all part of the storyline, of course, where he says that he was very close to retiring before Dominic convinced him otherwise. Um, where, you know, remember they had that storyline, that angle on Raw about three months ago where Ray said he was about to uh, hang it up and then his son Dominic came up to him and said, no, Ray, or no, Dad, you can't, uh, you can't do that. Like, we, you have to see it through. I want to be able to wrestle one day alongside you. I want to team with you, blah, 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 before you can retire. So maybe that was part of it. I'm not sure if Ray was actually closing in on retirement before um, that storyline started and they just turned it into a storyline. I don't know, but that's what he says here. We see him meeting a fan before Raw, which was really cool. Um, he said that being United States champion is big. And honestly, before the last couple of months happened, had he did indeed retire a couple of months ago, he would have been happy with all that he accomplished. And he said that he's uh, really glad that his son convinced him to not retire and that he's happy that he motivated him to keep going to accomplish what he ended up de what he ended up doing as United States champion in the last couple of weeks alone. Um, and he made him realize, Dominic made him realize that it was not his time to hang up the boots yet. And he looks back on his 30-year journey to, again, from where he started to where he is today. Sad to be away from his family more often than not, but he is happy that he's doing something that he loves and he's getting paid for what he loves to do to be able to provide for them. And he says that he's blessed before we uh, 
close this thing off and ride off into the sunset. So I thought this was a great special. Got to know more about Rey Mysterio, know more about Rey Mysterio than we did before, which we already knew a lot about Ray Ray, but uh, this was a great in-depth special looking at his journey throughout his feud with uh, Brock Lesnar and then United States Champion. I thought it was interesting. We really did not see Kane here at all. And again, he just got his own chronicle um, literally like two or three weeks ago over a Survivor Series weekend, chronicling his journey to the WWE Championship match at Crown Jewel. So they didn't really need to t- they didn't really need to touch upon that stuff in this special, though, you know, it was kind of part of the reason why Kane was brought in was because of Rey Mysterio and the stuff with Dominic. So I'm surprised we didn't see more or hear more from Kane in the special than we did. We see him for a split second when they're in Mexico together and that's it. So I thought that was a bit surprising, but that's merely nitpicking. Overall, I thought this was great. It was all about Rey Mysterio um and how he came close to retirement, how much the masks and his family and his fans mean to him. So yeah, definitely well worth the watch, especially if you are a Rey Mysterio fan. Check it out right now on the WWE Network, WWE Chronicle on Rey Mysterio. So tonight as I speak, after TLC, we're getting the Stone Cold Steve Austin Broken School Sessions Episode 2 with Goldberg. Now, I don't know how long this one's going to last. Uh, I probably will not be watching it tonight. I'm still backed up on shit from like a week ago. And I will not be watching TLC Tonight Live either until tomorrow because Alexis has to work tonight. So we're not watching it together until Monday morning, and I'm going to be out anyway. So I'm not sure if I'll get my review of that up tomorrow or some other point. I'm not exactly 100% sure yet. Um, But if I do, if it's not up on Monday, then it should be up on Tuesday. Either way, check it out right here on WWE Network and Show. My complete review of Brook and Skull Sessions, WWE Chronicle, WWE 24, and everything else. Uh, at any rate, guys, thank you as always for checking out these episodes of WWE Network and Chill and the entire channel for that matter. Be sure to like the video, drop a comment, uh, share, and subscribe. All that stuff is greatly appreciated. And uh, yeah, enjoy TLC tonight. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, folks. I'm Graham Jason Matthews. Enjoy the holiday season, and I'll catch your ass down the road.